Welcome to the Sheriff Academy. I'm Craig Spooner from DLF Trifolium and I'm here today to talk to you about grass seed. Uh, one of the things that we need to be aware of is, is we need to make the right choices about what seed we use on a football pitch and the first question really we should ask ourselves is what is it that we're actually trying to achieve? What sort of pitch do we want? So what are we looking for in a good football pitch? Ideally we want something that's uniform and consistent and is both stable and safe. We don't want it to affect the player's performance or even the outcome of the football match. So we want something that also looks good on camera. So now we've looked at what it is we're trying to create and we now know the features that we're looking for for the grass seed to make for us. We now need to look at actually what we're going to use. So in the world there are about 64,000 different types of grasses. In the UK there are 10,000 different species. But in amenity we only really use six and have done for a number of years. Um, the main six are the fescues, slender, strong and chewins. We've also got smooth stalk meadowgrass, brown top and highland bent, and the one that we're interested in is the perennial ryegrass. Disease resistance. We want to choose cultivars that offer a wide range of resistance to many different diseases. Cleanness of cut. We need to choose cultivars that leave a nice clean finish so that we reduce the risk of disease infecting the grass plant. Nice colour. We want good year-round colour, both summer and winter, so that the pitch looks good to play on. Fineness of leaf and shoot density. We want a grass plant that's got many leaves and is nice t and produces a nice tight dense ward so that it gives us a good surface to play on. Quick to germinate. We want to choose cultivars that are very quick to germinate once they've been sown. This reduces the risk of weed seeds germinating in the sward. Good recovery. We want grasses that can recover after a match has been played. No doubt your pitches have heavy use and you want them to look good for the next time you have a match. Fast to establish. We want to choose grasses that have germinated quickly and then also establish quickly so that we have a sward that's ready to play on and is hard wearing in as short as time as possible. You've generally not got very long from end of season renovations to when the pitch will be required again. Proven performance. We want to be sure that the cultivars that we choose are proven and that we can rely on them to do the job we need them to do. Low nutrient input, possibly one for the future. We need to choose cultivars that require less nitrogen from a budgetary point of view and for any possible changes in future legislation with regard to nitrogen. We want cultivars that need less water. Again, this may be more important for the future as strains on water become intensified and the availability may be reduced. Hard wearing, the most important characteristic of them all. We need the pitches to be hard wearing and be able to take the amount of punishment that they're probably going to get. So having discussed already the characteristics that we most seek in our grass seed choice, there's one clear option that stands out. The most important characteristic is hard wearing and along with all the others discussed earlier the obvious choice is perennial ryegrass and that's the one that the majority of you should be using in 95% of the cases. So in 95 to 99% of cases perennial ryegrass is probably going to be the right choice for you. There are a few circumstances where maybe a fescue or a smooth stalk meadowgrass may be more appropriate. This can depend on your location, the amount of wear and maybe even budget. But in the, in the mainstream most of you will be using perennial ryegrass and that grass will give you the characteristics and the features that you're looking for. So how can we give our seed the best possible chance to grow? The answer is to make sure that we make the best possible seed bed. This could be at the time when you do your end of season renovations or it could be whilst carrying out in season renovations. Removal of thatch. It's important that we remove as much thatch as possible from the surface and below the surface. Seed will not germinate in thatch, it needs to be in good contact with the soil. Excessive thatch will also affect the playing characteristics of the pitch. Aeration. We need to make sure that the soil is well aerated, so that we improve drainage and that we provide a good healthy environment for the seed to flourish. Correct timings of selective weed killers. It's important to remember that weed killers can affect new seed and any such applications should be given good consideration, particularly when using grass seed. Use germination sheets. 
This can speed up the germination process, particularly when sowing slightly out of season, when we have cooler temperatures at night, for example. Reinstate level. We need to make sure that we address any surface issues such as worn away areas in the centre circle or the goal mouths prior to seeding. Have a fertiliser program. Once the grass seed has germinated and is establishing, it's important to remember that perennial ryegrass is quite a hungry plant and will need fertiliser to keep it healthy. Top dress. We need to top dress to make sure that our surface levels are good and top dressing can also help to cover seed and therefore give us good contact with the soil. Be prepared to water. Once the seed has germinated, it's critical that the seed and the new seedling gets adequate water so that it doesn't dry out. Keep free from debris. Once the seed has germinated, it's important to keep the seed or the new shoot free of debris such as leaves, litter or anything else that may affect the plant growing. We want to make sure the plant gets as much light as possible. Mow frequently and remove clippings if possible. We need to mow frequently because this will help the plant to tiller and give us a tight dense sward. Removing clippings will also help to keep thatch to a minimum. Alleviate compaction. This goes hand in hand with good aeration. Many pitches we see have compacted soils and need vertidraining. This again allows the plant to have healthy roots and deep roots. In the UK there are a number of seed houses that make bespoke mixtures ideal for your football pitches. The most important resource that you'll probably use is the BSP booklet by the STRI and it gives you a guide of the different characteristics of all the ryegrass cultivars that are available. So ideally in a mixture you should be looking for three or four cultivars in that table. Three or four cultivars just gives you a broad range of characteristics that hopefully deal with each situation. So you may choose cultivars that have got good winter colour and good summer colour so that we get good year-round colour. We want cultivars that are resistant to a number of diseases, not just one disease. There are three basic methods of overseeding. You can either disc seed, dimple seed or broadcast seed. Disc seeding involves making a slice in the soil and it places the seed directly in contact with the soil. Dimple seeding makes small pockets where we drop the seed in and the rollers cover the seed up and broadcasting the seed is just spreading the seed on the top either via a fertiliser hopper or a top dressing type machine. Depending on what you're actually trying to achieve will influence your choice of your overseeding method. If you're seeding a pitch from scratch and you've got no vegetation there already, then dimple seeding is probably adequate for you, again in, in, in a couple of directions. If you're overseeding into an existing sward where there's competition from the grass that's already there, then you probably need to disc seed. Broadcasting the seed, either via a fertiliser spreader or a drop spreader, is the least desirable, and this I'll go on to explain in a minute. So the seed also needs moisture, warmth, light and oxygen. And then once it establishes, it will require nutrient. Timing of your overseeding is crucial and is often overlooked. Usually you will have a couple of weeks at the end of the season when you've got good conditions to overseed. You need to take advantage of the warmth and the moisture Bearing in mind you'll be doing these operations probably in the spring, you need to get on as soon as the season's finished to get the job done before the plant becomes stressed with drought and heat that we experience in the summer months. The first three to four weeks after the seed has germinated are really the most crucial time. You need to make sure that you've got water available, you need to make sure that you can feed if needed and it just needs nursing through those early three to four weeks. If you can get it through that period, then you'll have a good establishment.